Let's take a look at your back. The back is composed of the trapezius, the rhomboids, the teres minor, the teres major, the latissimus dorsi, and the rector spinae. The latissimus dorsi is accountable for the downward motion of the arm from the front as well as the side and is also responsible for creating that sought after V taper look. So how can we build a set of well developed lats? If you're anything like me then you're born with high lat insertions that give your body more of a Y taper than a V taper. My goal was to do whatever I could to emphasize my lower lats to compensate for the genetics I was born with, but can we even emphasize different parts of the same muscle? Well, spot training is a bro science theory that fat or muscle can be lost or gained in a specific area. While it is not true that fat can be purposefully lost in a specific area without affecting other areas of the body, it may be true that the muscle can be trained in a specific area. According to Gray's Anatomy, the 20th edition of the book written by Henry Gray and revised by Warren Lewis and not the TV show, where the muscle fibers are parallel or nearly parallel to the direction of the tendon, the entire strength of the muscle contraction acts in the direction of the tendon. In other words, the force acting on a muscle fiber is proportional to the cosine of the angle between the line of pull and the muscle fiber orientation. Thus, the more aligned the line of pull is with the muscle fiber, the greater the force acting on that muscle fiber. According to an article by Lieber and Frieden, it was found that the magnitude of active strain after eccentric contraction causes muscle damage. Assuming what Gray says to be true, I think it's safe to say that parts of the inner chest cannot be isolated. However, certain groups of muscle fibers within the same muscle may be targeted more than others, given that the exercise-induced muscle damage occurs more on those fibers. It may be difficult to train a specific group of muscle fibers given that all muscle fibers activate during contraction to a certain degree, but may be more easily done in larger muscles, such as the latissimus dorsi, especially given a good mind-to-muscle connection. If we set the anatomy of a person's lat on a 3D Cartesian axis, and set the x-axis pointing towards the side, the y-axis pointing towards the back, and the z-axis pointing towards the head, we can better analyze the angles at which the muscle fibers run. This paper, based on data from Boak, Burns, and Buskies, observed the highest EMG activation in lat pulldowns when the torso was leaned back at 45 degrees. By turning the lat at a 45 degree angle, we observe that a greater amount of muscle fibers are more engaged than at other angles. We cannot immediately conclude that the greater amount of muscle fibers engaged is the causation to the greater total EMG activation of the muscle, but I believe we can assume this to be a valid correlation. Given that the greatest EMG activation is at 45 degrees, I believe that we can infer that the engagement of certain fibers may be focused at various angles. If we first analyze focusing engagement on the bottom fibers of the lat, we can observe the greatest engagement for these fibers will occur somewhere in the XZ plane with less engagement as we move to the higher lat fibers until the engagement is nearly zero at the top of the lat. The directions of the lat fibers tend to have an elliptic path which changes the plane of the greatest engagement to around 45 degrees from the Z axis towards the end of the eccentric contraction, which is responsible for the rowing movement of the arms in many effective exercises. If we analyze the top fibers of the lat, we observe that the greatest engagement for these fibers may occur on a plane intersecting the X axis, angled between 45 to 60 degrees from the Z axis. Given these previous deductions to be valid, recommendations for lat exercises can be made. To focus on the lower lat, I recommend exercises such as the shoulder width lat pull down with elbows tucked towards the rib cage. To further optimize this, start the exercise sitting around 20 degrees and slowly lean back until the lat pull down cable is aligned with the lat's line of pull, which may be around 45 degrees. I also recommend straight bar rows with elbows tucked into the rib cage when following a similar protocol to the previous lat pulldown. To focus on the upper lat, I recommend exercises such as the wide grip lat pulldown at a backwards 45 degree lean. One important thing to note is that exercises that emphasize parts of a muscle group, such as the upper and lower lat, most likely do not induce the greatest EMG activation, due to the fact that the primary goal of these exercises is not to engage every muscle fiber, but to focus on a group of fibers. This is shown in an article by Signor Ryle et al, which found that wide grip anterior pulldowns induce greater latissimus dorsi activation than supinated grip or wide grip posterior pulldowns. That of which greater activates elbow flexors and simulates tucking the elbows into the rib cage to emphasize the lower lats. Thus, if one's primary goal is to induce the greatest amount of hypertrophy possible, I cannot condone these recommendations to be optimal. Hey guys, that's the end of the video. If you'd like to see the references, I list them in the description below. Um, this type of video was inspired by Jeff Nippard, who is a pro natural bodybuilder and he creates great science-based videos. So if you haven't heard or seen his videos yet, 
go check them out. So yeah, that's it. And uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.